I got in there, he'd suffocate. set up. Yeah. Right next to a noisy highway, unfortunately. Yeah. But that'll wake us up and we won't oversleep that way. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got, what, two days of scouting? Two full tomorrow. days of scouting. Yeah. And then Saturday it opened. It rained really hard tonight before we got here, so it could be muddy out there. Yeah. And then, uh, I guess... The question we gotta think about is which one of these bucks we see is worth my 25 years of applying and your 15 years of applying. Yeah. Combined for these two tags, we did 40 years of application. <laughs> Who does 40 years or average of 20 years for a pronghorn hunt? Yeah. You do, I guess. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, tomorrow, coffee breakfast go find big hank all right sounds I'm like gonna, a plan i'm gonna dig my sleeping gear out here there you go all right here we go out there immediately. Well, opening morning. But on scouting days, you don't have to be there immediately. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, you got a coat in case yeah. it rains? <coughs> All right. We're good. Okay. Sorry to sound like your mother here. <laughs> Sorry, folks. When I'm uh, when I'm out pronghorn hunting, I'm so happy. I'm always singing, and I'm not very good at singing. So you're just gonna have to deal with my bad singing. You might hear a little Merle Haggard today. Maybe a little George Jones. Maybe a little Wynn Stewart. Who knows what you'll hear from me? Might even hear a little Jamie Johnson. A little while, I love it. I'd say Patty Loveless, but I don't think anyone's gonna confuse me with Patty Loveless. All right, he's still down there. Well, he was down there. He is. He's still looking at us. He's not one of those I'd shoot him right now kind of bucks. Ooh, look at the mass on that guy, huh? Well, you know, for the first stop, it's okay, huh? Not right. too bad. I mean, the first place I look, saw a buck. That's a good sign, I guess, huh? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't do us too much good for another two days, though. Yeah, but part of what we're going to do here, Matthew, if everything goes according to plan, we're gonna show the audience 
at least the Randy Newberg methods that are in my outdoor class course on pronghorn hunting. Now, they may not be the right methods, but they're, they're out there for the world to see. So if we don't get anything, people are gonna be like, who the hell would buy his class? Yeah. All right, folks, stay tuned. You're gonna get fun from here on out. The sun's up, pronghorn galore. All right, let's find them. Okay. All right. Find them. Hurry up. Get get your butt going. Find them. He's got some prongs on him. <laughs> really? When you say that, I'm like, huh. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. This thing is a mile away and we can see length and mass and prongs. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the prongs on that guy. There's some length there too. Yeah. Hmm. It's weird, it's the rut and he's all by himself. He might be one of those three-year-olds that doesn't realize how big he is yet. You know, sometimes they go from age two to age three, they just end up blowing up in terms of their horn size. But they still remember last year when they got whooped by that five-year-old, so. Even though they got bigger horns, they're like, I, I don't need no part of this yet. Looks like it's gonna rain over here pretty soon. I hope not. I don't need to get stuck in here. You you can hope not, but I'm here to tell you it's gonna rain. Yeah, and I'm sure this bentonite looking clay here probably turns into <laughs> grease, <laughs> yeah. slime and snot. All right, let's go get a closer look at him. Yeah, let's go try to find him again. All right. Mobility is the key, I guess. We've only went about five miles and it's already 10 o'clock in the morning. We're not covering much ground. Yeah, I should probably keep looking then. Yeah. I think we might want to do that or we'll be, we'll be out of time. We won't have hardly seen anything as far as how big the unit is. Yeah. What well, do you think? Let's keep moving. All right. If you say so. That is one of the more impressive antelope scrapes I've ever seen. I mean, usually they're not dug out like how deep this is. And then he, he's got a big track. I mean, he's got old scrapes all along here. This is like home central for him. Part of what you do when you're covering ground like this is you drive a lot of these roads, and especially as hard as it rained last night, to find fresh scrapes like these two. It tells you there's a buck in here somewhere. You may not see him. But when you're seeing these kind of scrapes and tracks along a main road, this road comes up on this high ground right here. He's here somewhere. This is, uh, this is part of his core area. He is somewhere within two miles of where I'm standing. I can promise you that. If we found him way back in a spot like this, I don't know that any other tag holders would be back here looking for him. So. We might snoop around here a little more, see if we can see him or bump him or maybe he's got some does with him or something. I see tracks of different sizes, so. I have a suspicion he's a big one. I don't we'll think- find out. I don't think anyone would come in here pronghorn hunting. I mean, maybe, but it just doesn't seem like where you would come and look for pronghorn. But I'm going to drive over the top of these scrapes. I don't need, we don't need any other people to see them. Uh -huh. 
what I'm doing is trying to find where these antelope are watering. Every water hole I've found has dried up. There's little spots in the rocks here because of the recent rain. But there's got to be a sustainable water source that would have kept them here through the summer. And this would have dried up over the summer for sure. I have to keep looking. There's another water hole a mile and a half from here probably. And I don't, I'm, well, I know. On the map it shows a water hole. I don't know if it's got any water in it. We'll walk up there and Matthew will have glassed them up or something. Be like, oh, daddy's right here. left of their water hole has dried up here and you see the tracks out there fresh tracks they're trying to water but there's really no place to get a drink turned into all mud so that creates a dilemma that water hole is dry this water hole is dry the next water hole is like two miles over that way I wonder if that's where they're going Guess we'll see. Okay. Here we go. Holy cow. He's right here looking at us. I'm gonna go get this spotter. Which way did he go? Left? Around that corner. Well, there he is. He's just a nice buck. Not huge, not big, just a buck. And so, you know, these are the kind of water holes they love because they can come in from above. They got, like where he was at, he's got 400 yards of visibility as he approaches the water. And there's not a lot of confinement here. There's some, but. He could then get up to this and look around, check everything out, and then he could go in and water and be out of here really quick. That's their preferred kind of spot. And there he was. He read the script, Matthew. Yeah? But he wasn't a big Hank. Yeah. Well, what do you want to do? You want to go somewhere or have a sandwich now? Just go somewhere. Okay. Jace, what's your boat? I'm good with that. And go check somewhere else out. Well, it's a long ways to where the next spot we're going to check out. <laughs> you saying you want a sandwich? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. Okay. I'm going to have a sandwich before we leave. <laughs> I'm going to have a sandwich. <laughs> okay. Then say so, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to restate that. I'm going to have a sandwich and then we'll go check out some more places. All right. That'll work? That'll work. Okay. And Big Hank and his does are going to come wheeling in here while we're having our sandwich. Saw a good portion of the unit today. Saw a few, few bucks around. Twenty-two. So, yeah. I mean, if you find twenty-two bucks in an area you've never been to, that's okay. Yeah, I think that's doing pretty good. Just need to find the ones that we're after and you know, yeah. focus on a spot or two. I think. Yeah. So the twenty-two, you saw one that you want to investigate further. Yeah. Okay. 
So we're gonna go investigate him further tomorrow night, just before dark. Okay. Check him out. Tomorrow Put morning? Him, no, tomorrow evening. Put him to bed. Oh, I wanted to see if he was in the same spot tomorrow morning. Oh, well, we got so much more ground to cover, though. Okay. Or you, you want to go see? Okay. We'll go see him in the morning. Okay. I, I can tell. You kind of got, <laughs> a, you got an itching he, for that one. He was, a, he was a good one. Yeah. Okay. I say we turn around and backtrack. We got about over an hour drive. We'll stop and look at a few places along the way, but... Yep. Sounds good ready? to me. Go get them tomorrow. One more day of scouting, folks. And then, who's shooting first? Same time. I don't know who gets the rifle out first. Okay. <laughs> He's in danger of getting shot, is he? I don't think so. Peace, brother. Grow up and be a big one someday. Last day of scouting, Matthew. We better find the big one. We're on buck number 23, and we've only found one you want to shoot. Yeah. Well, and we aren't even 100% sure on that, are we? Uh, not 100%, but pretty sure. 95? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's load them up. We got, the sun just broke the horizon. We got prime time for about another hour. He's not gonna get shot today. Well, not today, I mean. <laughs> I'd hope he's not getting shot today. <laughs> Season's not open. <laughs> That's a bad way to say that, Randy. He's not getting shot this weekend, I don't think. I mean, he's fine. He's not... Not big Hank. Huge. I guess this is almost like whitetail hunting. You just stand somewhere and they walk by. And you hope that the one walks by is the one you want. I mean, they're only 1,500 yards away. All right, well, you wanna keep moving? Yep. Okay. Move along. We gotta find that great big one where you're just like, I'm shooting that thing. Fifty-nine bucks. Still haven't found that. Holy smokes, there he is, kind of buck. But we got about two and a half hours here. We're gonna find him. Lickety split. And when we do, we're gonna be here right away in the morning. Wherever that place is that we find him. And we're gonna get him. Maybe. Normally, the plan would be 
you find the one you want and you come here right at last light and you put them to bed even though they may not be bedded you know that at night they're not going to run around a lot because they don't want to run into a predator at night their really good vision is mitigated so they don't have much better vision at night than a coyote or whatever so that's why usually if you can get them in an area where they're feeding watering or gonna bed down before the last light you go there the next morning and they're gonna be within a couple hundred yards of that and a lot of people they get too rambunctious pronghorn a lot of times don't get up on their feet until the sun is like up up they you'll be looking out there looking out there right at that first shooting light you know half hour before sunset sunrise you're like where'd they go where'd they go and then 20 minutes later poop 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 they're popping up like little jack in a box and they just stay bedded because they have two things first seeing problems from a long ways away and then being able to outrun it and anytime those two senses are compromised they just hunker down stay tuned folks tomorrow we're gonna be wearing blaze orange be toting rifles have ammo in our pockets mr nosler is gonna do a little bit of talking tomorrow maybe hopefully think so i hope so i hope so but first two days don't give uh, great hope but after 25 years i'm not in a big hurry yeah well all it takes is one or two we have yeah. two tags all it takes is one so those of you who aren't old like me go and look up the old light beer commercial less filling less great or taste less filling taste great and the type in all we need is one pin rodney mm -hmm. you say all we need is one buck that's true all rodney dangerfield needed was one pin to win the big one and he rolled a gutter ball mm. let's not do a gutter ball you ready for brats yeah let's head back to camp and get some rest yeah